Ladies and gentlemen, Governor of the great state of Alaska, the Honorable Sarah Palin. Lieutenant Governor Sean Parnell and President Stevens and Speaker Chenault, our lawmakers, our commissioners, our native leaders, my dear family, we thank all Alaskans. Thank you for this opportunity. First, I'd ask that you would join me in thanking those who protect our freedoms and they allow us to assemble here tonight. That's our good men and women in uniform. They are America's finest, our U.S. military. Well, it has been quite a year since we last gathered in this chamber. Just two days ago, we witnessed a shining moment in the history of our country. Millions of Americans praying for the success of our new president, and I am one of them. He has his work cut out for him. But if President Obama governs with the skill and the grace and the greatness of which he is capable, Alaska is going to be just fine. We congratulate President Obama. And for keeping the homeland safe and for being a friend to Alaska, I thank President Bush. Now, 2008, it was the year that America looked to Alaska. One of our own sprang to national attention, and there was political drama and controversy and lively debate and a few awkward moments, and in the end, some disappointment. But what a glorious debut for a unique Alaskan. And we congratulate our own former Senator Mike Gravel. <laughs> In the history of Alaska, it was also the conclusion of a long and distinguished Senate career. We thank Senator Ted Stevens. We wish him all the best. Successor, Senator Mark Begich, the best to our new man in Washington and to working with long-serving Representative Young and Senator Murkowski, and congratulations to her on those worthy committee assignments. <laughs> now tonight I'm pleased to see some new faces here, and I appreciate all who have sworn to uphold our Constitution. Newcomers, some may say that we have some pretty strong differences here among us, but Subtlety, too, isn't always our strong point, but we try to keep things friendly and civil, and we've been known to actually be able to succeed. And I used to wonder if those occasional rough edges of politics were unique here under the great North Star. But I ventured out a bit this past year, and I can tell you, as far as partisan quarrels go, really ours aren't so bad. At our best, we are forthright in our opinions and we are charitable in our judgments, and fair, just like the people who have hired us to work for them. Today, when it seems that challenges may be as high as Mount McKinley, and change as constant as the mighty Yukon flows, and political events send shockwaves through our foundation, just like the 64 quake, what is it then that Alaskans do? Alaskans, we, we climbed Denali, and we forged the river, and we rebuild a stronger foundation on higher ground. When it matters most, lesser differences fall away, and just like family, Alaskans unite. And it was this kind of determined action that turned the Northland wilds into a territory, and a territory into a state. And that state, across 50 years, 
into a land of industry and opportunity and enduring beauty. And now that perseverance is needed again as we go through a time of testing for our country, a time of economic worry for many Alaskans. It's a time of challenge to the wisdom and the resolve of state government. Wally Hickel had said that he feared more than any economic depression was a depression of the spirit. Alaska, this is the time that we revive the optimistic pioneering spirit that our founding mothers and fathers seem to have birthed into our state constitution as we celebrate statehood. Let that spirit rise now and our actions correspond as our founders had intended. See, we have that choice how to respond to the circumstances around us. As public servants, will we draw from a servant's heart the resolve to put pettiness and power struggles aside and work together for the good of the people? We have the choice, and I speak for the entire Palin Parnell administration when I declare that we choose optimism and collaboration and hard work to get the job done. And this starts... It starts with a frank assessment of our economy and our budget. We have natural advantages to defer some effects of the global recession. Our banks have good liquidity. Our credit market is relatively strong. Home foreclosures here, lowest rates in the nation. That's the upside of a regional economy. The reverse side, our unemployment rate is about the national average, which is over 7%, which means there are thousands of Alaskans who need good jobs. And when our budget is 90% reliant on the value of energy resources, there are consequences. Two years ago, at this podium, I urged spending restraint, and I asked that billions of surplus funds be deposited in state savings. It, it struck me then as just a simple precaution against, as I had described it, massive single-year cuts down the road if and when we face tougher times. And you legislators, you agreed. We're thankful for that because now we can meet our challenge in a stronger position. And you understood that the challenge is not just to think fast and change plans when the price of oil suddenly falls, affecting revenue by billions of dollars. The challenge is to be consistent and follow a consistent plan despite inconsistent um, prices. With prudence, we built reserves. That was good planning. This national economic downturn that spread to the energy market, it found us prepared. And that's more than many states can say about the financial situations that they are in. When oil prices and state revenue are on the rise, as was the case, there's temptation, of course, to assume it's going to go on rising forever and to spend accordingly. But since prices fell, there may be an equal temptation to draw heavily on reserves or, for some, to be tempted to tap the permanent fund or tax our hardworking families. But no, with our budget, the aim is to keep our economy on a steady, confident course. The aim is, with discipline, we protect our reserves, we promote economic growth. Now, unless the price of a barrel of oil dramatically increases and soon, we're looking at a potential shortfall here, revenue in excess of a billion dollars this year. So, with a close eye on price, we all need to be willing to curtail spending as needed. And if there's a shortfall, there are options. It's going to take a cooperative spirit around all of us here in order to see us through this uncertainty. I had proposed that we start with an overall reduction of 7% from last year's expenditures. And that's a real reduction. It's not just a reduction in the rate of spending increases, as cuts are often defined elsewhere. It's transparency in budgeting, too. That's just like when the public saw, as we put our state's checkbook online, where their dollars are being spent. We stand ready to work with you lawmakers who hold the purse strings, stand ready to amend the budget as we receive revenue updates in the weeks ahead. Last year, we all expected a surplus. I think we all expected that. But even then, with record high prices, I chose prudence and directed state commissioners to cut millions in operating costs. And they are amazing, and they are doing that. Finding efficiencies 
even during times of plenty. That's common sense fiscal responsibility. Now, obviously, circumstances, they have changed so greatly. They've changed more than even the international seasoned oil experts would be able to predict, requiring us now to adjust even more. Therefore, 